What if I told you the dire wolves, giant extinct predators from the ice age, are no longer extinct? Scientists have just done the unthinkable. They have bred a creature that vanished over 10,000 years ago. It's not just science fiction anymore. We've crossed the line and there's no turning back. But dire wolves are just the beginning. What happens when humanity gets the power to resurrect any extinct creature? Or worse, to recreate our ancient enemies. The dire wolf was one of the most fearsome predators of the Ice Age. It's bigger and stronger than modern wolves. They hunted in massive packs and thrived during a time when nature was far more brutal than it is today. Now, using a mix of genetic engineering and selective breeding, scientists have managed to recreate a dire wolf hybrid. Now it's not a full clone, but it's close. And that opens Pandora's box. With CRISPR and rapidly advancing cloning technology, we are on the verge of being able to recreate any extinct species. And that power is both incredible and terrifying. Imagine if we started recreating our past. Imagine bringing back the woolly mammoth to combat climate change. That sounds noble, right? But what happens when we go further? What if we revive prehistoric apex predators? Creatures that were designed by nature to kill with no natural predators to stop them. And yes, I'm talking about dinosaurs, but not just dinosaurs. There are far more terrifying creatures lurking in our ancient past. These are some of the prehistoric killers that could return. Megalodon, a prehistoric shark stretching over 60 feet long. It could swallow a great white in one bite. Megalodons ruled the oceans for millions of years, and if brought back, they could destroy modern marine ecosystems and pose serious threats to coastal communities. What about the Tyrannosaurus rex? The king of dinosaurs, 20 feet tall, 40 feet long, with a bite force stronger than any known land predator. If recreated, the T-Rex would be untouchable, too dangerous for captivity and too fast for containment. What about the Jackalopterus, a giant sea scorpion? This ancient sea scorpion could grow over eight feet long with claws capable of crushing prey. Imagine it crawling out of the rivers or breeding in lakes. It's nightmarish, right? What about the Spinosaurus, much larger than a T-Rex and more aquatic? With the massive cell on its back and crocodile-like jaws, it dominated both land and water. It's a creature with no equal and zero containment options if it ever escaped. What about the Argentavis, one of the largest flying birds to ever live? With the wingspan over 20 feet, it could swoop down and carry off small animals or even children. It dominated the skies. Now imagine drones failing to track it if we reintroduce it. Bringing back these creatures isn't just about science. It's about control. Who decides which species to revive? What if nations start competing to recreate the deadliest animals for warfare or prestige? Could we see bioengineered zoos or prehistoric coliseums for the ultra rich? And if we could bring back dire wolves, what stops us from recreating our ancient ancestors? Imagine Neanderthals, or even earlier, Homanis being revived for research. Are they test subjects or people? With the power to resurrect, we're also creating a future of moral dilemmas we're not ready for. The revival of the dire wolf is one of the greatest scientific feats in history, but it's also a warning, a sign that we've unlocked something that can't be put back in the box. From mega sharks to sky hunting birds, we're flirting with forces we barely understand. Humanity's curiosity may have no limits, but if we're not careful, the next chapter in evolution won't be written by us. It'll be written by the monsters we resurrected. So ask yourself, is bringing the past back to life worth risking our future?
If you found this terrifying or fascinating, hit that like button and subscribe for more deep dives into the wild side of science.